Okay, the question that we're exploring right now is, is this function differentiable at all x values? So I'm looking at a piecewise function. I know those are your favorite. And let's see, we've got a linear function for the first part and a parabola quadratic function for the second part. So I know that separately those functions are differentiable for all x values because there's no points of... Um, there's no corners, there's no cusp, there's nothing weird going on in the graph that we defined, or vertical tangents that we defined as places where a function would not be differentiable. So the only real part that I'm concerned about is I'm concerned about with where they meet. So I've got a line and I've got a, let's see, my line is going to have a negative slope and I've got a parabola, which is going to be a parabola going up. And I'm worried about, and I'm totally just sketching here, I have no idea what's happening with these, um, really. But I'm worried about that point at which they meet, is that going to be the same slope? So I'm going to jump right into the calculus, and we're trying to figure out if the slope on the left-hand piece is the same as the slope on the right-hand piece. So I'm going to start with this piece right here, the left-hand piece, and I'm going to say that in order for the slope, I'm really looking at the slope as I approach one from the left. So formal notation would be I'm looking at the limit as h approaches 0 of my negative 2 times x is 1, so 1 plus h minus a negative 2 times 1 all over h. But I'm going to say that we can, now that we know the shortcut, we can really just say, okay, that is fancy notation for I'm looking for derivative of my function negative 2x at, a lot of times in calculus we'll use this vertical bar, and I haven't used this yet in class, but at x equals 1, which means that I'm going to just simply take the derivative. The derivative of negative 2x is negative 2, and in fact, this case, when x is equal to negative 1 or x is equal to anything, the slope is always negative 2. Duh, we're looking at a linear function. Okay, fabulous. I'm glad we established that. So my slope is going to be negative 2 when I'm coming from the left um, when I get to 1. So what's happening on the right side? I guess that's what's the more interesting part here. So let's take a look at this function. And again, my formal notation, limit as h is approaching 0. And this is really coming from the right, and I should have done the left hand there. That's how I established I was only doing a one-sided derivative, basically. Um, would be my x value is 1, so 1 plus h squared minus 4 times 1 plus h minus a 1 squared minus 4 times 1 all over h. And again, we're not going to do all of that. That's my definition written out. It's good for you to see. But I'm going to say I'm better than that. I know how to find the derivative the shorthand way. Derivative of x squared minus 4x and I'm particularly concerned about when x is equal to 1, so let's do it. That would be me taking the derivative is 2x minus 4, and now I'm concerned about when x is equal to 1, so I'm going to keep giving myself some more room. I'm going to say that's 2 times 1 minus 4, which is 2 minus 4, which is a negative 2. Brilliant. So I've got that at x is e when x is equal to negative 1, my slope from the left-hand side is going to be negative 2, and my slope from the right-hand side is going to be negative 2. And, in fact, they are the same. So this would lead one to believe that this function is differentiable, since my slopes are the same, and that was my main concern. However, I'm going to tell you that the answer is actually no, it's not differentiable. And I'm trying to make a point here because we often just jump to the good part, the, oh, I'm in calculus, I'm going to take the derivative. Um, but what did we forget here? There's a, there's a special requirement, something that has to be true, and if you go back to your points where, at which a function is discontinuous and reasons why a function could be discontinuous, there's a different one that has nothing to do with the slope at all. It has to do with the fact can't, the graph can't have a break in it. So it has to be continuous at the point which we're um, examining. So in order for it to be continuous, well, guess what? We're back in last chapter, and we've got to decide if the function is continuous. So three-part definition to continuity. Um, here we go. 
trying to give myself some more room. I'm going to go to another slide and just read function just so we can work with this. So I've got f of x was equal to negative 2x, and that was for x is less than 1, and x squared minus 4x, and that was for x is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so three-part definition of continuity that we should all, absolutely all know and still need to review. Here it is. So part one, I'm going to go with part one is f of 1 has to be defined. f of 1, I'm using this function, would be 1 squared minus 4 times 1. Just listing it out for myself, 1 minus 4 is equal to a negative 3. Cool. Okay, second part, limit. As x approaches 1 of my function has to be equal to some value, subcase for this. So i got to look at the left-hand side. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of my function is negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. And now my other subcase is I've got to look at the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of my function, and that's using this function. So that's equal to 1 squared minus 4 times 1. I know we just did the same work above, so I'm just going to put a negative 3. That is the work we did here, but I'm using my notation to specify I'm finding the left-hand limit because in order to put an answer here, I have to have examined both of these two things and, in fact, said that they're the same. So at this point, my conclusion is the limit does not exist since negative 2 does not equal negative 3. My left-hand limit is not equal to the right-hand limit. That's my reasoning, but that's not my conclusion. My conclusion is the limit does not exist. And now my ultimate conclusion is I don't even need to do part three. My ultimate conclusion is f of x is not continuous at x equals 1 because... The limit, sorry, my brain's getting pretty sloppy here. The limit does not exist. And as soon as I've got this conclusion of not continuous, guys, guess what? That means that there's a break in my graph. That means that my beautiful graph that was working out so nicely, I was really excited about it. My beautiful graph that was working out so nicely over here, what it really was doing is it was doing, here's my negative 2x, and then my other function was my parabola, and if you actually graph these, what was happening is it was doing something like this. And the parabola was slightly below the other one, and the slopes did match up perfectly. If they just would have, one would have nudged up a little bit, it would have been perfect. So we actually have a function where it's not differentiable at that point, but it's not because of the slope, it's because of that break in the graph, it being not continuous. So my suggestion is actually to do this problem the reverse of how we just did it and check for continuity first. You guys are good at that. Um, but either way, you've got to check both pieces and we could just as easily have the other happen that is continuous but the slopes don't match up or you could have both work out. So you kind of got to check both parts. I don't know if I have a shortcut for you. Um, I tend to go in order of check continuity and then check slope, but I wanted to make a point here and you to see the importance of checking that it is continuous and really give us a point for all the work that we did and the the emphasis I made on that part of last chapter.